Hey everyone, it's Matthew here at Midland Pictures. Who is excited? Apple yesterday dropped a new Final Cut Pro update, 10.5.3. It's not the big update we were all hoping for, but there's some interesting new things, especially as it pertains to the browser. Let's get in depth with that and see how it might affect your video editing workflow. Check it out. Save it for conversation. So yesterday I was nose to the grindstone uploading my latest video linked up above and I completely missed that Apple dropped a Final Cut Pro update. Looking at the release notes now and it's a pretty incremental update, nothing too major, but they did make some serious enhancements to the browser and how you can search for your media using the browser with new search criteria as well as the big feature for us organization freaks that's been added is being able to customize all of the columns that are represented in the browser. So if there were columns in the past that you didn't care about and didn't want taking up valuable screen real estate, you can get rid of them. And if there are columns that you really wanted to add in, you can add those and then save them as different presets. So first things first, if you're upgrading Final Cut Pro to 10.5.3, I would suggest copying your existing version of Final Cut Pro into a separate folder or on an external hard drive so that in the event that there's an issue with your upgraded version of Final Cut, you can roll back to the earlier version. Remember, this is enough of an update that when you open an older library, it's gonna need to update that library to the new format. And if you update that library to be compatible with 10.5.3, you can't roll it back to open on 10.5.2. So I would suggest duplicating any libraries for projects that you have going on so that you can preserve a 10.5.2 compatible version while you're experimenting with a 10.5.3. Just a quick reminder, if you haven't clicked the subscribe button and you love Final Cut Pro content as well as filmmaking content, click the subscribe button down below, join this community and this channel. We'd love to have you here. Now, that being said, let's dive into these new features. So I already have one of my custom views up here on the General Dodge documentary that we've been working on. And you can see if you right click on this, you have some new options here. I'm already in a preset that I made called documentary, but I'm gonna go ahead and show edit available columns. You can see here we have a new column set editor, which lets you look at all the different properties that you can populate into these columns, and there are a ton of them. If you wanna further break those down into the different categories, these are some of the things that you can do. So you have video properties, which is common camera properties. There's a lot of properties in here that you probably would never use, but video properties, camera properties, those are probably the main ones. I've used a lot of these studio properties to add different things to my documentary list. Down here in the lower left, you can do a new column set, you can duplicate a column set, or you can delete a column set. You can see here the default Final Cut Pro one, uh, and then I have documentary. If you wanted to make a new one, you can do new column set, and let's call it uh, narrative. And then what I would do as well is I'd pop back out to the all properties list, and then I would go ahead and uncheck all of them so that you could go through and check only the ones that you want to use. You can also search for different ones. So let's say you wanted to pull up take. You can see here that we have take. Uh, let's see if there's anything with lens. You can see here with Canon lens info, this could be a, a column that you use, let's say on this project to identify your lens as a tilt shift lens. So there's all kinds of great customization you can do to the columns. And if you're the type of editor that really is excited about the control and the organization that you can have with this, definitely take a look through this and figure out what are the things that you most commonly want to know about your footage, whether it's the duration, the start end time, what the frame size is, what codec it is. You can see here in mine, I care about codecs, frame rate, frame size, the real number the camera name, the notes field, which is most important to me for documentary. But because this is so new and we now have control over all of these columns and how we organize it, I'm most likely gonna be continually customizing these layouts as I go through specific projects. One thing that bothers me about this is that this window cannot be resized. It won't let me make it <laughs> bigger. I have to, it has to be this small. And that's a little frustrating because if you click over here on this, which is the filter HUD, you can resize this to any size you want. So why Apple can't we resize that window, especially when there's a huge list of stuff that we may want to be able to look 
at more of those items in the list uh, than it being contained to the size of that window. So another exciting feature they've added uh, is to the search menu here. You can see this little down arrow next to the uh, magnifying glass that wasn't there before. And now you can search all of your footage in the browser by all the text. You can specifically search through the notes column. You can search just the names column or you can search for markers. Now markers aren't represented in the columns, they would be on your clips. Some people like to put markers on their footage and then type in notes. I think that's a great way to further organize your footage. I personally don't use that for like typing up a summary of what people said in their answer in an interview. I like to use markers for something like act two transition or great trailer soundbite, little things like that that tip me off to how I might use that clip in the actual edit. So you can see here I've got a couple markers and if I switch to the marker field and type in trailer soundbite, you can see that this marker comes up and then when I click on it, the playhead moves to that marker so I can mark it in and out and bring that clip down to the timeline. The other one I have, let's say, is an exposure issue. And you can see that that brings that clip up and moves the playhead to it. So I can take a look at that and then bring it down into the, into the timeline, knowing that I have an exposure issue to deal with with a colorist. So that's a really nice way to do more in-depth searching for your footage, the notes, names, and markers feature. Uh, the next thing to take a look at is over here in the filters HUD. When you bring this up through the browser, you have a new way of isolating your original media, your optimized media, your proxy media and any missing media that you have. So all you have to do to do that is go to the HUD and then add this media representation column. And then you can see we have original optimized and proxy. And then from there, you can show if it's missing or not. So if you wanna search for all original media that's missing, all you have to do is add this criteria. We don't have anything that matches that, so that's why that's not coming up. So this is a really great way to further isolate your footage in the browser. Again, for me, the browser is sort of the hidden gem of Final Cut Pro. Everybody loves the magnetic timeline once they get used to it. But for me, someone who really loves to organize footage and shoots documentary style stuff where there's a ton of footage to go through, interviews and B-roll, I am so hyper organized so that, again, when I'm editing, I can search for anything very quickly and stay in the creative flow while I'm working on my video. It's crucially important and this update is great for the type of editor I am. I know on Twitter there's a few documentary editors that have been you know, doing stuff for HBO and other streamers and I've seen some of their tweets singing the praises of Final Cut Pro. I think this only serves to further enhance the workflows for those types of editors, as well as assistant editors that really need to look at the technical information about footage to be able to sort and organize. What's really interesting too about the browser enhancement is how you're able to save different presets. Because I think for assistant editors and editors, there's going to be a lot of different modes that you're in when you're working through your data. And there may also be custom column views per project. So for example, I have two documentary projects right now open in Final Cut Pro, one being a documentary about a local Local musician. The other was a museum piece that we did for a local uh, museum where they wanted a 20 minute documentary on its famous Civil War general. For each of those projects, I would use a custom column view because there were a lot of different things that went into each shoot, whether it was the cameras that were used, the type of footage we were getting, how we were logging the footage. On one project, I was working with a director side by side. On the other, I am the director. That director may have had preferences to look at footage. She may have wanted to see only the footage from the C300 Mark II, or maybe she only wanted to see the footage that was shot with the tilt shift lens. We can input all of that information into the browser and have something like the lens type listed in one of the columns. Whereas on my project, because we're not using a lens like that, that's specialty, I don't really need that column for that project. So you can create presets that not only cover the different types of films you're working on, maybe there's one for a documentary, maybe there's one for a feature narrative, short narrative, uh, maybe there's one for sketches or for YouTube. What's also exciting is you can reveal these presets in Finder and share them with other workstations so that you can be on the same page with the editors that you're working with. I'm hoping there's some future videos I can make as I continue to work on these documentary projects where I can show more in-depth 
why this is such a valuable enhancement to Final Cut Pro. Right now, we're just taking sort of a cursory look and getting an understanding of what they've done differently. If you're a Final Cut Pro editor and you love content like this, do me a favor and click the subscribe button and the bell so you get notified every time we upload a video. If you like this video, give it a like. It's the best thing that you can do to help support the channel. And if there's something that you found in this update to Final Cut Pro that I'm overlooking, drop me a comment below and let's start a conversation about it. I think that's gonna do it for this video, everyone. Thanks again, as always, for joining me and until the next one i'll see y'all soon oh would you look at that apple changed the icon for the blade tool it's no longer a razor blade now it's a little tiny pair of scissors oh yeah and look over here it's the same thing got the little scissor there next to the blade tool so yeah apple went ahead and changed the blade tool i wonder if they were getting feedback that like the razor blade didn't make sense or people didn't know what it was and that scissors are just more universally understood to cut things then a razor blade. No more blade icon for the blade tool. Now we get a little pair of scissors. All right, Apple, we'll go with it.